We have got a trio of polls out today to discuss with CTV pollster Nanos Research. Two of them guaranteed to have the liberals crawling under their desks. Let's talk <laughs> India trip fallout, the government's NAFTA strategy, and a very tight horse race with the man himself. Nick Danos joins me in the studio. Welcome hey, to the show, Nick. I want to go to the uh, success of the Prime Minister's India trip. And I, I think success has been, is a term you're using with some irony here. Yes. Look at those numbers. Uh, Dan, I think for the, uh, Don, Don? For the, sorry. <laughs> for the record, Frank? I'd like to say <laughs> yeah. that there is a firm 2% of Canadians, or one out of every 50, that believe that the trip was a success. And they were on the trip. Yeah, I know. There's obviously room for improvement. <laughs> Uh, another 11, uh, another 10 percent said there was somewhat a success, but check out the red on this. 59 oh percent, six out of every 10 say it was not a success outright, and another 18 percent somewhat not a success. So uh, for things that don't usually cut through the clutter, it seems that this India trip has, and Canadians, not necessarily everyone, but most everyone, including many committed Liberals, have given it a thumbs say. thumbs down. Because you know, think of it this way: the Liberals are at 36. But there's only 12% of Canadians that say it was a success or somewhat a success. So even in the Liberal tribe, thumbs down thumbs on, down. on, the, uh, so, on the trip. Let's bring in the horse race because I'm trying to get a handle on whether that trip is connected to what we're seeing on that ballot support, which is down quite a bit, it seems to me. You had them a little further ahead, certainly, last time. And some of these other polls have actually the Conservatives ahead. Yeah, well, you know, in the latest nanos tracking that we've just released, it's basically a statistical dead heat between the Liberals and the Conservatives. You know, 36, 35. So factoring the margin of error, it's a tie. Um, and, uh, you know, the Liberal advantage uh, basically no longer exists. This coincided with kind of very negative coverage, or what I'll say, controversial coverage related to the uh, India trip, but it's an accumulation effect. All these things just start to add up. But the kicker, when you go underneath the numbers for the national ballot, are the gender numbers. Not surprisingly, the Liberals are still ahead comfortably among women voters, right. but they have lost a massive swath of male voters in the last six to eight weeks who are going back to Team Blue, it seems. Yeah. And that's very good for Andrew Scheer and the federal Conservatives. And correct me if I'm wrong, I also looked a bit, bit further on these numbers, and it seems to me that the preferred Prime Minister numbers show Trudeau basically at his year low. Yes. Right now. Yeah. So he's, he's wearing this. Well, not just that. Actually, on our weekly tracking, every major indicator has the Liberals at or near a 12-month low and the Conservatives at or near a 12-month high. So that's the new trend. So let's see if, if Scheer can feed the fire and this new trend line in order to kind of solidify some of the gains that have happened over the last where's six to eight the, weeks. Uh, where's the Just Jagmeet Singh magic here for the NDP? You know what, 19% still isn't that bad. Yeah. You know, he's still within striking distance. But, uh, you know, the, the focus has been on the Liberals. You know, the irony here is when the numbers move against the Liberals, it's because, can we go ba -dum -ba, because the Liberals have made some sort of mistake. It's not because of the brilliance of the Conservatives. Yeah. And uh, that's why Andrew Scheer has to hope that uh, he can feed the fire and that the Liberals continue to have a misstep and face controversy in order for this trend to continue. And this might explain why today in question period, Scheer went, continued to go heavy on the India trip and, and the whole weird answers that Justin Trudeau gave to that uh, man convicted of attempted murder that cry tried to crash a reception. We all thought, well, we're past that now, but he's seeing these poll numbers oh, and goes, we can still work some more uh, blood out of that stone, this I guess. This India story's got everything, right? It's mm -hmm. got he said, she said, and it's got crazy pictures, like Don, really crazy pictures <laughs> that people can remember, right? And uh, I think that's why uh, it's got a certain level of stickiness as something, at least for some Canadians, epitomizes uh, what this government is about. We did ask you, a uh, power play exclusive, drum roll for us, please, uh, about U.S. tariffs <clears throat> and how Canada should or shouldn't change its uh, NAFTA negotiating strategy uh, based on those still being threatened. What did you find out? You know, it's interesting. When we look at the different options, I think the best way to describe it, I guess we've just had St. Paddy's Day, right? There's yes. no fighting Irish in Canada <laughs> when it comes to going and having a trade war with the United States. You can see in the face of possible steel and aluminum tariffs, Canadians want, a majority of Canadians, 54%, want to continue with negotiations and hope the U.S. changes its mind. Mm. And uh, that's the majority. You know, another 26% want to raise tariffs and retaliate. Yep. 
9% want to break off talks, which would be the hard ground, and uh, you know, 4% would want to uh, give the U.S. concessions mm -hmm. uh, in order for these uh, things not to happen. Well, so not a lot of fighting, fighting Irish, so to speak, and Canadians when it comes to taking on the big Trump well, we're Man. hoping for the lucky charms to come out at, uh, in Trump world, but I'm not holding yeah. out much hope. There. Just remember, Don, <laughs> lucky charms is also a fruity cereal. <laughs> okay. On that note, uh, <laughs> we're done. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you. <laughs>